never considered myself as an artist. It just seemed pretentious to me. There was this guy that I knew. He was like of the beat generator, he wore a little beanie, and he called people cats and stuff. And he was an artist, you know, and he painted. I was just in awe of him. He said, you know that Alan's an artist if it's not too late. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's like perfect. It was a call to, you gotta work. You do whatever it is you kind of envision yourself as, and you do it, and then you become that. It's, it's, it's an odd kind of truth. My sense of what the function of art is, you know, in my realm, is to get people to look closer to the information around us. And, and that anything that will help us or get us to see the natural world a little deeper, a little better, to me, is successful art. There's something so beautiful about the details of nature. I just think it's, you know, basically human to be fascinated. I grew up in Yosemite, right? My first job was in this Ansel Adams gallery. There were these gorgeous, you know, old southwestern pots there. So as a kid, I was exposed to these. They're always just the most beautiful things in the world. So I've always had this potter in me. The evolution after that was trying to adapt making pots to the way I lived, which was never with electricity. And I travel all the time. I'm in my Volkswagen van. So I had to make pots in a kind of a more nomadic way. I hand built and then fired in the campfire. That turned out to be essential to that quality of the, you know, the prehistoric, you know, or the, you know, the southwestern pots. And so I found myself making the pot I wanted. Then I shine them with a rock to get them really shiny. They're essentially vehicles for the skins that go on them. I found myself, you know, homesteading in Alaska. It was life with skins, and you know, we had we were eating caribou and moose, and we had fish camp, and we were, you know, catching all these fish. So I became adept at using skins, and then that translated to my artwork. I, I let the skin rot and, you know, the hair comes off and then I use it, it's like making a drum. I use it like that, it smells terrible and I stitch it in place and then it shrink wraps. And so there's that aesthetic of, there's that bulging out of the pot and then the squeezing into the skin makes it one thing. That is the basic aesthetic. There's nothing macabre about my work. I'm not tweaking that stuff at all. The, the deadness has nothing to do with it. It's just the beauty of the patterns is, is what it's about. My pots are mostly, they're, they're, they're my meditative work. It's automatic. When I'm like putting bones and things onto a pot, there's an exactness, you know, precision is really important. And if it's, if it's slightly off, it doesn't, it, there's no energy there. There's a gravitational thing happening. And, and when they're on there, they are on. And when it's on, it sings. It kind of does it itself. <laughs> the paintings and the castings is a little more conceptual, a little more idea-based, and constantly inventing. People don't get my castings, you know? I mean, they like it, some, but you know, it's, it's like anything. Some people really do, you know, and that's just wonderful. Most people, it's just a bunch of concrete on the wall kind of stuff, right? And, you know, mud cracks, I mean, who cares, right? But the paintings do f kind of correlate with my pots in that they're all made from earth pigments things I collect when I'm traveling around, right? I, I gather these little, you know, bags of, of the different colored dirt. I mix it with egg yolk and make egg, egg tempera. In that way, they're like my pots, because the pots all have documentation about where everything came. When I show them, there's a little label that goes with them that says, you know, deer skin, you know, Guimas Island Road, you know, um, buffalo sinew, you know, wherever it comes from. And that's really important. And, and if, if there's any kind of political statement, you know, that's probably the most important thing to know exactly that, you know, that skin was a deer that was hit by a car on this particular road, you know, says something. 
everyone now, when I see people, they always tell me about roadkill they've seen, and every time they see a roadkill, they think of me. You know, a lot of people do, you know, and it's sort of <laughs> kind of alarming that that's... <laughs> And also with the pot, it's like, they're really ugly when I'm doing the skins. I have these beautiful, shiny black pots, and I will take this smelly, disgusting, opaque deer skin, or whatever, skin, and slap it on there and stitch it up, and then it's just this ugly thing. But then it dries in that shrink wrap thing. There's this whole transformation. So I don't actually see the final product. I set the stage. And hopefully I do everything right. Hopefully I've glued the bones all right so they're not going to move under the skin or whatever. And that I tied the skin right, did everything. And I set this stage and then it morphs into itself. So it, a, a completed skin pot, for me, seeing it the next morning, is just like it, the experience of taking a, a regular high fire glazed pot out of the kiln and you just that wonderful joy and surprise and acceptance because it's never what you think it's going to be and you have to accept what it is and, and be thrilled about that. These materials, because you know, they're, once they're thawed out, they're rotting. And so there's this imperative, it's just like, well, it's just like working with clay. There's an imperative before it dries out that you got to work and do it. And so once I actually have materials in hand, I rarely stop, actually. These king snakes were so beautiful, and I was sure I was going to screw up because they were just by themselves. They were just, you know, chicken feet or chicken feet doesn't really matter, right? But you know, these snakes—they were like one of a, one one of a kind kind of thing, and they were just amazingly beautiful by themselves. And I was nervous that I'd screw them up, you know, make some basic decision that was wrong. It's all experimental in that, and I love that. You know, it doesn't lead to a thing I can necessarily sell. I got to stay alive, right? And but it just thrills me that process of exploration with, with these you know new materials. It's all invention. Well, I like doing it, right? And and I like the things that I make, but it, it, its purpose is to look closer, you know, recognize how gorgeous nature is and things that we think are trash, you know, fish skins, and, you know, chicken feet, and cow, any of that stuff, cow stomachs or, um, or roadkill or any is beautiful. And to look closely and if I can, you know, get other people to do that a little bit more, then I'd consider myself a completely successful artist.